This conference will now be recorded. All right, everybody. Welcome to another one of our speaker series. Today is the fifth day of June. That's 6-5 for all you who don't know. And I want you to know, the audience, right, to think back to a chance where you had to overcome a challenge. It doesn't matter what it has to be. Like for me, maybe it was like a, I played soccer and they put me in goal and I said, no, don't put me in goal. And I blocked the goal, but I literally pushed it into the goal too. That's my example, right? It's a cool thing to overcome any challenge that you have in life. Absolutely. And there's no greater reward than to face and successfully overcome a challenge, right? So our guest today, Mark, knows all too well what it means to face a challenge. In his young lifetime, he has overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles that has changed his life, right? Mark has faced adversity with strength and determination and has been able to be a real example for all who has heard his story. And today, we're so happy to have him here to tell his story. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, Mark, thank you so much for coming in here. And um, I kind of wanted to keep that as cryptic as possible to build the background of your story, because I really think it's a great one. Awesome. Well, I try to do that too. So thanks for having me today. I'm coming to you from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. For those of you who were wondering, and I'm going to talk fast because I could tell my story for hours and probably still not cover everything. And we don't have that much time. Plus, I want to make sure that I leave plenty of time for questions. So grew up in Philadelphia, became an Eagle Scout at the age of 14. And uh, still involved today in scouting. And I think, you know, as I'll weave you through parts of my life and talk about some of these challenges that I've overcome, uh, we can kind of cover lots of things and, and hopefully give you some questions to ask me later on. So growing up in scouting, you know, I knew always set goals and, and high goals. And obviously becoming an Eagle Scout at 14 takes a lot and then becoming uh, staying involved in the program. I went to school at Temple University in Philadelphia, and one night I uh, was out with some of my fraternity brothers driving home and had some car troubles, so pulled over to the side of the road to kind of see what was going on. Um, got out of the car. Two volunteer firemen were driving their cars down the road and uh, pulled over to see if they could help and see what was going on, so they set some kind of flares and some flashing lights up to draw some attention. And uh, that really didn't seem to make a difference for this one guy driving this big Trans Am barreling down the road that literally hit me. Um, so hit my body. I flew up onto the hood of his car. My head went through the windshield of his car. And I was on the hood of his car while he hit my car and totaled it. A pickup truck and totaled it and then smashed into the wall. I smashed into the wall, I rolled forward, got wedged between his car and the wall, and that's when the gas line burst. Uh, at that point, two truckers stopped their rigs in the middle of Interstate 95, came over, lifted the car up, pulled me out from underneath, radioed ahead to the hospital. Um, took me to a local hospital in Philadelphia, and as I tell people, you know, when I woke up was about 16 days later, um, and I was really lucky. And it's kind of hard to think about that, but I suffered seven burns on my body, two broken bones in my hand, two broken bones in my arm, uh, 100 stitches in my face, and traumatic brain injury. Um, when I woke up, you know, my brain injury was a closed head injury, so it just meant a lot of swelling. And that swelling went down kind of as each day went by. And when I woke up, you know, that, that 16 days later, I was getting better. And then all of a sudden, over the course of a weekend, I started to get a little better, a little better each day. And come that Monday morning, Mark was back cognitively, but not physically. I still had to cast on my arm and cast on my leg. And the one side of my body had been paralyzed. So I needed to really you know, do a lot of strengthening and uh, learn how to, to kind of build up strength and, and get back to the way that I was. And 51 days later, 
as I tell people, I was really lucky. I went for my follow-up appointment with the doctor, cut my cast off, and I walked out of his doctor's out of the doctor's office. Now, if you were able to fully see me, and I don't know if this would help any by me pulling back a little bit, you'd see I'm sitting in a wheelchair and you'd probably be shaking your head and saying, so you walked out of the doctor's office, but you're in a wheelchair. So you gotta stick with me. And the good thing is, since we don't have a ton of time, I'm gonna get there quicker than usual. So I got back to uh, school, decided on a career in the jewelry industry, uh, went to school to become a gemologist. I managed a jewelry store in the mall that had just started opening, was doing really, really great. But that inner leader in me, those leadership skills in me, in fact, really is what um, showed right away. I started at the store with no experience in jewelry. Uh, three days later, I became a supervisor and three weeks later became the assistant manager. And it had nothing to do with my jewelry knowledge, it was all about being able to lead and manage, uh, coming up with a schedule, how to communicate with employees, how to talk to customers, how to talk to employees, all things that, right, I was doing as a kid on that trail to Eagle. The difference was there were people there who were twice my age that just didn't have that kind of experience. So I used to joke with the owner of that store all the time that like, you know, you're spent, you're investing all this money in me to go to school to become a gemologist but you keep passing me over for the manager's job because i'm too young and um sure enough an opportunity came to go manage another jewelry store i went to do that and um then there came a time where i'm like you know i'm kind of making these guys a lot of money and i bet i could do this for myself so i opened my own jewelry store in the neighborhood i grew up in i was 25 at the time now, I was not one of these kids that grew up as like a fourth generation jeweler, that everybody in my family was in the jewelry business. Um, I just was a, a kid who worked hard and a lot of people were willing to take a chance on. That store became instant success. Things were really, really great. And as I tell everybody, I used to park my car, walk around the corner to my store every day with two goals in mind. First was being a, a successful businessman. I wanted to really make this, you know, uh, business work and, and be successful. And I really wanted to become kind of like a stable fixture in the community that people knew I was going to be there. Or they could rely upon me. And, and I never could have imagined that when I parked my car on December 5th, 1996, so about 23 years ago, that it would be the last day that I would ever walk again. I just want to stop real quick for like five seconds and just think about when all of this is over. I can't see you, but I'm going to assume you all can walk unless you have some kind of issue. But imagine something happens that quickly um, that you can't get up and walk out of here. And that's what I was faced with that morning when two guys came into my store and uh, I greeted them like I would greet every other customer that comes in. Hey, how you doing? Uh, first guy came walking through this the door. Second guy, hey, how you doing? And instantly he pulled out a gun and pointed it right at me. Put my arms up in, in the air and said, please, you know, take whatever you want. Just don't hurt me. Um, cooperated completely, went to the back of the store where they cleared out the safe, took my jewelry off of me. Meanwhile, the guy's yelling things to the guy in the front of the store with him, telling him to tape me up and tie me up and break the cases and take the jewelry. And amazingly, the guy that came into the store with him kept saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And as I laid on the ground, the guy turned, the guy with the gun just turned around, got frustrated and shot me. That bullet went in my chest, in and out of my lungs and severed my spinal cord, leaving me paralyzed from the chest down. So right about there. Um, you know, I wasn't going to be as lucky as I was eight years before that when I had those cut, casts cut off and walked out of the doctor's office. Thankfully, I've been able to find a way to make my life successful. Um, I'll give you the fast version of it so we can get to some questions. But, you know, in the 23 plus years that have come since then, I've gone to work at the hospital that both times treated me for my injury. 
and have a successful career in fundraising. I've raised over $30 million over the last 19 years that I've worked there to help patients like me who really need to recover and learn how to get back to an active life. Um, played wheelchair tennis for eight years all across the country, two national championships in 2003, which was really, really cool. Travel all around the world, still involved today in scouting, serve as a member of the National Order of the Arrow Committee, the National Disability Awareness Task Force, my local council board, uh, region board. But I think what I take the most pride in every day as I get up, I go to work and I make a difference in people's lives. I might come home tired at the end of the day, but I feel really good knowing that the work I do makes a significant difference. And then the second part that I get out of my job that I think is even better than a paycheck is being able to set a positive example to patients in my hospital right now. So we're a small hospital, just 83 beds. People are recovering from brain injury, spinal cord injury, stroke, amputation, serious life-changing, altering injuries. Um, and I think just for them to see somebody like me goes to work wearing a suit, drives a car, you know, takes my wheelchair apart and puts it in the car and takes it out of the car all by myself. And, um, you know, I think it sets a positive example. And I hope that, you know, they look at me and say, well, you know what, maybe I can do that one day too. So I'm going to come up for air, Chuck, and see if you've got some questions you want to send my way. I had to give you a really fast version of things, but, uh, you know, hopefully enough to kind of generate some interest here. You know, it's funny. It doesn't matter if it was a, a, a slow or fast presentation. It doesn't matter if it was the abridged version or the full version. Um, I, I feel as though, uh, like, you're the greatest. <laughs> and, 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 like, it, it kind of hit home on, like, on many different levels. And, and I, I feel as though many people can relate on many different levels. Um, obviously not neck to neck with yours, um, but... It's just such a positive thing, um, and I am so sorry. You know, like, uh, I mean, what you went through is um, like definitely like deep. Yes, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, you can say that. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to think of how to say that without saying it, but you can say it. I can't. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, but but the whole thing is is like, um, how do you feel about? Um, the adaptation you said, or or like as long as you feel as though you're doing good, do you think that like, I I know obviously you never thought that being a scout and doing your great scoutly things or being a scout at 14, which is not, it, it is a hard thing to do and often not happening. And I think I might've been 16 and I thought that was difficult, but, but all that you learned within that small amount of time, do you think that affected how you felt after all those accidents? Like, did it change? Like, like if you were somebody else who wasn't a scout, who wasn't uh, loyal or brave, or it, it kind of doesn't matter how many references we can hit up, but do you think that if you weren't a scout, you would have received this differently? I don't know, but I can tell you because I am a scout and I am an Eagle Scout, that clearly it helped me because you think about everything we do on the Trail to Eagle is all about setting goals, right? And putting our you know, our plan together and figuring out how we're going to get to the end game, you know, and in that case, it was Eagle Scout. In the first injury, the brain injury, it was, all right, how can I get this cast off the leg and cast off my hand? And how can I walk out of here? Because that was realistic. And then, you know, the second time around, it was like, okay, so walking out of here is not realistic. But, you know, I was 28 at the time. I had my whole life ahead of me. So, Let's figure out together, let's set some goals and let's work towards them um, to get me back to live in a, my life again. And honestly, I didn't know what that really was going to be or what it was going to look like, but I was anxious to figure out how to get there. And I think because I had learned so many things like that, you know, perseverance, working hard, not giving up, um, setting goals, learning new things, stepping outside your comfort zone, all those things that the you know we do in scouting, whether it's on the trail to Eagle or in leadership positions that we hold, you know it's not always easy. A lot of times it's hard. So I think that definitely uh, helped get me through this. In that eight year, I hate saying like a window. Mm -hmm. it, 
it, it, the eight year um, like window or like gap in between not your window but like the, the yeah, yeah. Was it eight, eight years in between the first incident and the second one right yeah um were you still involved in scouts? Did you have mm -hmm. um, as positive as a message as you're doing right now? And then how did that kind of steer you towards, um, uh, I guess, like, like what did you think, I think? Because, like, if, if you had that same message right after the first incident and you were preaching, um, and I hate to use the word preaching. You understand what I mean. But, like, yeah, yeah. doing this, such great speeches because of, like, you know, you're doing a great job. And then this second thing happened. What was... What was going through your mind? Well, look, I, I think that when the first injury happened and to be able to recover completely from it, right. it was really traumatic. You know, it was huge. Brain injury, 100 stitches in my face, two broken bones in my hand, two broken bones in my legs, seven burns on my body. To be able to recover from that, and the worst that I have is like a scar on my leg, you know, really gives you a, a better appreciation for every day that you wake up and those things that you used to stress about or you used to think were like oh my god you know the, I, I forgot my my pen today or i forgot my phone or you know like god, that's nothing compared to what you know i had to deal with so clearly i felt like you know i made it through and then the second time you know while it would have been very easy to say oh my god why me you know how can this happen i've already had my brush through life i think part of it was you know what well did this before uh, just do it again it's a little different and when it's crazy as you can imagine you know you never expect to when i left that hospital eight years before you know after finally being done i'm done i'm not coming back here again you know who would ever expect to be back at the same hospital for a totally different injury especially you know it's a small place so but I think you just you just fight and make it through and it, it gives you such a different appreciation for every day that we wake up. And, you know, I like to think as we look at what's been going on with COVID-19, that maybe that's helped everyone, even the, the scouts that are on this call, too, because you think about like the things that you love to do that you haven't been able to do for the last couple of weeks and or last couple of months. And you know what? When you get to do them again you're probably gonna appreciate them a little more, right? Right, absolutely. Uh, um, I, I'm trying to think, like as the Assistant Vice President of Development for the McGee mm -hmm. Rehab Hospital, um, yeah. how do you how do you use your story to help communicate? Because like, I know the communication probably between you and the rest of the hospital is a solid, you know, very family-like type of um, conversation that, that happens, right? But as the, um in your job right now when you're reaching out to other organizations for maybe donations mm -hmm. or stuff how, mm -hmm. how do you how, how do you uh tell your story or how do you perceive yeah well i think it actually you know my boss and i joke all the time we've been working together for you know 19 years and i've known him since my injury because my story was covered on lots of news channels and okay. tv and was on america's most wanted tv shows so you know, he got to know me when I was a patient there. And, you know, I don't have to talk about the statistics or things right. that our patients go through. I go through it myself. So I think when I'm able to talk to potential donors or people that I like to become a donor about why they should give money to support our hospital, I can first thing firsthand talk about all these great things and the differences and, you know, what our patients are going through and the impact that the money they give can make and the difference it can make like wheelchair tennis you know i had the opportunity to play wheelchair tennis a, a chair for wheelchair tennis costs like three thousand dollars you know well thankfully we have some donors who sponsor our wheelchair sports program that were able to help fund that you know i don't know that i would have been able to play tennis without that so um but then to be able to tell people because a lot of people play tennis like hey I can play that too now I was like wow that's cool I can relate to that I understand so I think it's like getting them to understand what the money they give can do and the impact it can make and you know in my case when it's if it's something that's touched my life I really get to talk personally about it that's kind of cool what was your favorite merit badge as a scout yeah it's kind of funny I mean I knew early on i loved public speaking and communication so 
I'd say probably both of them. Public speaking was, you know, my my favorite one. And just kind of funny that years later, it's something that, you know, I'm thriving on. But I can look back to this probably why I'm thriving on it from what I did when I was a kid. That's so funny because if I like if I had to take a bet on that, that, that was my first two guesses. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so um, uh, what kind of education did you have? All right. So like we know that like the accident happened when you were in college. Right. So so mm -hmm. what was what was your original plan? Like how did you schedule out what you wanted to be in terms of yeah. classes? What kind of yeah. tra like um, trail did you want to do in order to get to where you are now? Yeah. Actually, I mean, I went to school for communications, but my hope, I think, at that time was to be a DJ or something like that. I had my own DJ business from the time I was 16 to 21 and uh, doing parties and, you know, weddings and things like that. Um, and I think that was kind of the direction that I was going. However, taking some public speaking courses, I also knew I really liked that. Just didn't know at the time, could I make a living doing any of that? So, um, but then, after the injury, I got interested in jewelry and uh, personally, because I like having jewelry. And um, and then that kind of led to a new career. It was time to do something. I was like, you know what, let me give that a try. But then it was learning, you know, the additional educational stuff. I could do the management piece, but I need to learn about jewelry. You can't bluff that. So, <laughs> so I think, and then, you know, years later, when I shift in the fundraising, <laughs> same kind of thing what's the right educational pieces that are going to help me become a good fundraiser right and that's so funny um like i also uh <coughs> managed in communications but I, I was also a dj and uh did the whole wedding circuit and whatever yeah yeah and, and i feel as though also communications and public speaking were like the way that i chose my degree in communications and um and the coolest thing being involved with scouts and then communicating with people like you who also yeah. did the same thing. Um, yeah. And it's great that you also have that ability to not like just do the scout thing beforehand after the fact or, or working for the hospital. Um, do you feel as though scouts helped you kind of just project yourself better? Like as if you didn't have scouts beforehand, do you think you'd be a different person? Oh, absolutely. I don't, I mean, I credit, everything that I am today for what I learned in scouting. And I know that's kind of like a pretty deep uh, thing, but the, the things that I learned at, as a youth, you know, put me so much farther ahead. Um, and I think the first time that I really learned that and realized that was when I was in college, I pledged a fraternity. It was like time to plan an event and had to do a budget and had to do a program. And these guys had no clue how to do any of that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, we just gotta do this and we have to do this. We have to do a backdater and we have to do all this. And it's like, how did you, you know, so here it was those same guys who probably three, four years ago would have been picking on me or giving me a hard time because I was a scout or like, damn, I wish I was a scout and learned all that stuff, you know? And that, that was a real eye opener. And I was only like, you know, 19 at that time. Right. So to all the scouts that are here, when you have people telling you that, you know, being an Eagle Scout is going to help you throughout the rest of your life, the truth. there's just <laughs> one example. And, and I was only 19 at that time when I first realized that I had skills that nobody else in the group had. And that was clearly because I learned them in scouting. Wow, man, that's so deep. Thank you so much for uh, coming yeah. out and saying this. Uh, we have exactly like, you know, a couple of minutes left. Um, what would you what would you have for advice for anybody in this would go like in two separate directions i would say what would you have for any advice uh for people who would want to help um the organization that you're working for now or who who would follow in your career path i think mm -hmm. or well, in life tremendous. actually yeah yeah i mean yeah. yeah so career path it's a tremendous opportunity and really rewarding because you know i get to meet with people that are on the front lines of healthcare, so our nurses our doctors and therapists and actually ask them like you know if you had x amount of money to do something that would make our patients better you know what what would you do 
And they threw out all these kind of ideas. And then it's my job to kind of make something come of that. So when I look back at the different programs, whether they're little kind of programs, like our wheelchair sports program, we have, you know, 40 athletes that are playing wheelchair tennis, basketball, rugby, and racing and sled hockey. Um, because of money that we raise, you know, I think that's really cool or whether it's much larger projects. So, I mean, I think that's the, the cool part of the, the career wise. And I think the other thing that I would tell everybody in regardless of what you're going to do, and, and I know you're going to agree with this because we talked about this earlier, you got to love what you do, man. You have that's to right, love yeah, right? <laughs> your job because otherwise you're just going to dread it and you're going to hate it. And guess what? Unless you hit Powerball or you come from an extremely wealthy family, chances are you're going to have to work for a long time. So find something that you love and that you can be passionate about and, you know, work hard again. At the end of the day, I come home really tired, but I'm smiling because I know that the work I'm doing is making somebody's life a little better. And I think, you know, I, I'm confident, too, that that comes from what I learned as a scout, too. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of questions are kind of coming in. Oh, they're all saying it's all comments. Incredible. <laughs> like, so thank you so much. And what a very inspiring mindset is the other comment oh, that we you. have. Um, yeah. It's so cool. And, and I would love to uh, see if maybe we could line up another one of these for sure. um like a like a part two um sure. for the people who didn't get here today and i know that there was a whole bunch of people who were scheduled to be here and, and I, as i mentioned off camera before um you know they're all juggling a whole bunch of merit badges yeah. which is great but um thank you yeah. so much for your time mark this has been great happy to do this and I'd happy to, to do this and yeah yeah glad to be here and, and again i mean look you know scouting for those you guys, I'm assuming you can see the background in my uh, it's wonderful. In, my, <laughs> in my picture here. You know, this is my life. This is my home office. But you see, I've got, you know, a frame with uh, what are the arrow sashes and I've got, you know, patches and pictures and plaques and everything else. And, you know, this is just a, a huge, huge part of my life. I'm 51. I've been doing it since I was eight and I'm going to do it as long as I can because you know, when I was young, a lot of people helped me get to where I was. So it's my job to kind of help give back a little bit. So happy to do this again. Happy to talk to you guys anytime. And, uh, you know, this has just been a lot of fun to be able to do it. So. Thank you, Mark. This has been great. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. You too.